You're English. American. I can also speak American. What do you want? I've come to wish you long life and to do business. The length of a man's life depends upon his uh, business. The business I propose can only serve to increase your wealth. That's my devout wish for you. Allah will hear your words of devotion. I will listen to your words of business. I want to buy your crop. Crop? What crop? The opium crop you sell each year. On the contract you have with the strangers from over the sea. But you know that uh, uh, poppy farms and opium production are illicit in this country. Yes. But they only become illicit when the illicit poppy farms are found. How do I know that you're not from the Iranian gendarmerie? Look out there. You see a sign of troops in any direction? What could six strangers possibly do in the midst of the tribes gathered here? Those that uh, my people and I have dealt with uh, arrive uh, tomorrow. We've done business for many years. I, 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 cannot, I cannot break my bond. Unless... And... Less. How much will they pay you? Twelve ounces of pure gold per kilo. And they've been cheating you? I'm prepared to offer you 16 ounces of pure gold per kilo of opium. That's the true worth. Thieves and robbers, it's they who cheated them. They've broken their bond. Did you say... 16? Benson to convoy. Benson to convoy. Watch the mountains. Watch the mountains. Hello, truck number one. Okay, Mr. Benson. We'll be keeping our eyes open. checked out every don in the Mafia from here to Sicily. There are no splinters in the organization. They wouldn't know. Sounds like a wildcat action. We don't know who they are yet. They made the buy before my boys got there. We tracked them, hit them, got one of them alive. An American named Benson. And this load they hijacked just disappeared, huh? Like he told you, booby-trapped and destroyed. I know what you are thinking, but your thinking makes no sense. The gold wasn't paid out. You can have your money back. Point, Marco. We each come up with a million for one ton raw opium. Like I said, you can each have your million back. Let me finish. No offense, but let me finish. I'm listening. One ton raw gives us 200 pounds white, and that's worth 10 million. I'm still listening. You made a commitment to us. We made commitments to others. I got delivery dates. New York, Frisco, Carlo and Dino here, they got dates. Naples, London, Marseille. We got to deliver, so you got to deliver. We can't settle for the money back. You will deliver like you promised or 10 times the investment. I'm sending him back to pick up another crop in two weeks. You want to stay in for the same percentages or not? We stay in. Uh, Marco, this time, get there first. Uh, 
amigo. Hello, Sam. You must be Jones. I represent Iran on the UN Narcotics Commission. I flew in from Geneva this morning. This is Colonel Salem, Collier Jones, U.S. Treasury. How do you do? Sam nice Lincoln, to meet you. also on loan to us. Um, and this is Dr. Bronowska, U.N. Laboratory. Enchanted. Shall we get going? Your luggage will be delivered to you at your hotel. You said that with a lot of faith. You can have faith too, Mr. Lincoln. I gave the orders to have your luggage taken to the hotel. And that's all I can tell you, Mr. Jones. Like yourself, the services of Mr. Benson were enlisted through the United States Narcotics Bureau. Because since we banned all poppy cultivation in 1955, opium has been intercepted in increasing quantities when crossing our borders. And a great deal of opium from similar sources has been reaching U.S. ports. This is where I came in, illicit poppy farms starting up all over again. Unfortunately, yes. They're mostly run by our nomadic tribes in inaccessible areas beyond our eastern borders. Poppies grow like weeds. We'd need an army to keep control. About Benson, how did this happen? In conjunction with the United Nations, we arranged for him to buy this opium from the trans-border tribesmen. Not so much to get evidence against any particular supplier, but rather to draw fire from the traffickers and get a line on their organization. The point is, the other side, whoever they are, did not get the opium. They need it. They'll have to try again and we'll have to be ready. We'll be able to trace and identify this opium once they move it outside of my area. Like that, you'll be able to follow the whole of its passage. It is possible to impregnate the entire opium shipment with a radioactive element. This way, you can trace even the smallest quantity through Geiger counter reactions. So far, so good. But how do we introduce the radioactive element into the opium before we let the traffickers get their hands on it? Well, that we have already worked out. The problem is General Baha is bound to be reluctant to risk more men on this type of operation. If there's anything I can do through United Nations? No. I'll talk to the General. Very well. Meanwhile, I suggest you two check in at your hotel. Tomorrow you can meet up again with Dr. Brunowska. It'll be a pleasure. Amongst other things, you'd better start learning how to use a Geiger counter. Why wait till tomorrow? Why not this evening over dinner? Perhaps now. Pay attention. It's not difficult. Geiger counters come in all shapes and sizes. For example, this is one. Not as powerful as some, but a lot less conspicuous. The cigar pack, medium range, best for your work. You see, transistorized, visual and sound, and nobody will ever notice it. I have made this cigarette radioactive. Now, hold the packet near it. Listen. I guess I'm a coward, but am I glad I gave up smoking? Looks American. Very attractive. Poor Mrs. Benson. Benson? Widow of the agent, we found that she, she arrived this morning from New York. I take an oath Benson never married. It doesn't sound right to me. Did she identify the body? Wasn't much left to identify. Sam. Excuse me, could I have this cable sent? Sir? Thank you very much. Honest, trustworthy, kind, pure as a rustling wine. What? I said, I think we should shake her room down. She's a phony. I'll detain the widow in the bar. Why no, you? no, I'll detain her. Why you? Collie, you know I'm more attractive to women. Besides, it's my turn. No, no, wait. We'll soon see. Stone, paper, scissors. Scissors cut paper. You win. I only do these more nerve-wracking jobs in the interests of the service. If she starts to leave, telephone her apartment to warn me. Collie, once I go to work, you'll be able to stay in her apartment all night. Follow that elevator. Stone, paper, scissors. Stone breaks scissors. I win, do I? Two more of the same, please, waiter. You catch on very quickly. They say I'm lucky at cards, too. I'm sure you're lucky at everything. Play again.
I like these Chinese games you play. Same stakes? Unless you think of a better arrangement. The uh, rickshaw coolies who taught you, what did they play for? Days pay, their wives, their families, anything they've got. We'll play for two more of the same. Ready? Stone, paper, scissors. Stone. Is wrapped up by paper. Isn't that what you taught me? Another two, please, waiter. Didn't I meet you in Hong Kong sometime, and weren't you pulling a rickshaw? Put your hands on your head. Now come down from there and stay close to the wall. Now go inside. Turn around. Now lean forward and press the palms of your hands against the wall. Feet a little further back. If you just... Amateur. Do all widows carry guns? That's how some of them become widows. Hello, operator. Send the police up. There's a cheap peeping Tom in my room. I'm not a cheap peeping Tom. Up. Oh. So you're not a cheap peeping Tom. Who are you then? Anyway, what are you doing in my room? I got lost. Standing on the balcony. If you just let me make one telephone call. Like peeping Tom, down. that's what they say he is. A peeping Tom. You should be ashamed of yourself. Revolting. I'd like to catch anyone peeping at me in the nude. <laughs> you have my sympathy, madam. It's people like that who give Americans a bad name abroad. Traitor. You must let this guy for life, Connie. Many men have risen. What the hell took you so long to telephone her room? She said she was just going to wash her hands. How could I tell that every time she washes her hands, she takes off her clothes to do it? Apart from that, which must have been something, what else did you see in her apartment? Her papers, her passport, Linda Benson, Washington, D.C. But I don't buy that widow's story. The way she frisked and dumped me, she's a real pro. What kind of pro? That's what we're going to find out right now. Taxi! Taxi! Well, what do you know? Iranian for taxi must be taxi. Mrs. Benson. Mrs. Benson has checked out. Why are we surprised? When? Ten minutes ago. And left no forwarding address, naturally. No, sir. Which flight did she go on? Flight, sir. The last train no plane left two hours ago. Do you know if she hired a car? Not with us, sir. She had to have some means of transportation. Maybe she caught the midnight camel. <laughs> Very funny. If it wasn't that, it was a rickshaw. 
Look, save it for the funnies. Signal Washington. Have them cable us, care of Colonel Salem, a description of Benson's widow. Oh. You don't look well. The widow went off with my gun. Good morning. Morning. Mr. Jones, I am United Nations assistant attached to Colonel Salem. He is now waiting for you in the communication room with General Bahar and asked me first to give you this cable. Well, thank you. Washington. Benson never married. Who the heck is she? Ah. Colonel. Good morning. Mr. Lincoln, who is on loan to us. Mr. Jones. How do you do? Narcotics Bureau, United States Treasury, General Bahar. Permit me to welcome you to Tehran, gentlemen. Thank you, General. Colonel Salem has been telling me that in four days' time there is to be another gathering of the tribesmen near the border. Yes. My idea is to surprise and overpower them, take the opium, and impregnate it with radioactive matter. Well, we'll set up Geiger counter controls along these three roads and report the movement and progress of the convoy. Without, if the opium leaves our area, we'll know exactly where and how. Then it'll be up to you gentlemen to forward to the person or persons who've made the purchase. We hope, in fact, right to the head of this whole organization. Naturally, once the opium is impregnated, wherever it goes, it is always traceable. It should be traceable. We hope. Well, how many men do you require for the operation? A mounted squadron of about a hundred. You realize, of course, that there will be 5,000 tribesmen scattered through that area. If one shot is fired in your attempt to overpower the band carrying the opium, just one shot, you realize what will happen to you all. Now, we've already lost good men in a similar and unsuccessful operation. I know you to be a courageous officer, Colonel, but when it comes to risking the lives of a hundred... But who might save thousands. Hussein Han. You are going east? To the mountains. With a big heat at our back. We are going north to the Kuwaiti feed. Then you still have a long ride before the heat strikes you. Yes. But we ride with speed. We have sent our women and livestock ahead. Is there anything you need to help you on your way? We are well supplied. I see that God has favored you. God is always good to the devout and the deserving. And may he look upon you and your people with favor. And may he grant you long life. If it's a long life you desire. If it is the will of God. The will of God, yes. Khoda Hafez. Khoda Hafez. <laughs>
some lost instructions for you. Now for the enemy camp, take this map reference. 910-946. Right up there, above those mountains. They'll have the guards out, guarding the other side of the camp. They'll never think that anyone can attack them from this side of the mountain. So that's how we're going to do it. The hard work. Now we must take this camp in absolute silence. If one shot is fired, we'll be overwhelmed. Probably most of us killed. Now, Sadar Rahman Han, I'll tell you what, and I'll tell you how. When the traffickers arrive, you'll carry on as usual. I'll be at your side constantly. If any of you attempt to rouse suspicion in the traffickers, you'll be cut down at once. I, I, I cannot, I... You would be wise to believe what I say. Believe? The prophet has said only the truth must be believed. And uh, 50 guns are 50 indisputable truths. That hole's deep enough. The radioactive liquid will sink right in. Careful with that stuff. Don't let it touch your skin. Ready for the radioactive element yet? Not yet. Colonel! Colonel! What is it? I think they're coming. Go and tell Colonel Salem. Everybody in their place. Hurry, hurry! Your signature, Sadar Rahman Khan, for the receipt of the gold. The receipt of the gold. May God grant you long life. You hear your words. If no one else will. Peace be with you. Oda Hafez. Oda. That's it. You and your people will be taken to the nearest gendarmery post. I know the place. I think I have many children there, small girls. And the gold? Will be used by our rehabilitation centers for addicts. Oh, yes. Worthy work. Worthy work. What are you getting on your Geiger counter? Strong signal. Should work out very well. Is it something I've never seen? What can you do besides making strange sounds? Well, as the willow finds water, this detects evil. There is no evil in opium. But there is in men. Task Force Able, message to General Bahar. Mission accomplished. Traffic is convoy, two trucks, one green station wagon. Five guards armed with brand guns. Departed enemy camp at 1400 hours this day. Initial route, southeast. Over. Control to Abel. 
you and your troop will remain in the camp until reinforcements reach you to transport the tribe to the post. Acknowledge, over. Message understood, over. One last message. You have done well. Out to you. Hello, Control. Message received and much appreciated. The ball now in your court. Good luck. And out. How's the signal? Still very strong. Hello, Geiger 1. Geiger 2. This is General Maha. Convoy moving southeast. All patrols in the area to report every 15 minutes, positive or negative. Hello, Geiger Control, post number one. Opium convoy passing through now. Geiger count, full strength. Repeat, full strength. Geiger 2 calling, Geiger Repeat. 2 calling. Opium convoy under observation. One station wagon, two trucks. Geiger counter reading maximum. Geiger counter reading maximum. I say again, Geiger, Geiger control, control post three. Maximum. Geiger signals are very loud. Estimated strength, nine. Estimated Hello, strength, Geiger nine. Four. Opium convoy changing direction. Hello, Geiger Control Post number 3. Signal reading. Hello, Geiger 7. Geiger Control Post 7 calling. Convoy no longer in sight. Geiger reading signal. Very strong. Geiger Control Post 10. heading south. And now this sudden and unexplained Hello, swerve control, southwest. Geiger one, Geiger Since two, then, Geiger negative. Two, negative. Two, negative. Two, but how? It's impossible. They must be somewhere on these dragons. They don't know they're being clocked. Doesn't make sense. No, it does not make sense. None of it. Signal to all patrols immediate. Move in. Search for and seize the traffickers' convoy. Control DZA calling. We have searched the trucks and found nothing. But we have captured seven prisoners. They beat us. Out. Made fools of us. But the patrol, it's uh, captured seven prisoners. They might be made to talk. Well, precisely what you argued would be quite useless. I suggest you gentlemen had better get in touch with your headquarters. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Um, Rath, thank you. We won't take up more than a as minute. As a matter of fact, have you addressed the meeting yet? Um, I'm next with one on the agenda, but I you have... see, what we're asking is the impossible. I know, gentlemen, I have a faint suspicion what you want. If you tell the other members of the committee there was a radioactive element in that opium, we're but finished. If you'd only... Doctor, that... if after all the people of Iran have done, it would be a pity now. Now, I'm gentlemen, don't you... please. Well, no one can say we didn't try. Nobody could get a word in, that is. You... My friends, I have something to say to you. It might save a lot of time if you listen. This cable was forwarded from Colonel Salem's office. Interpol in Naples report the seizing of 150 kilos of opium. Gentlemen, gentlemen, don't you want to know whether it's radioactive or not? It is. Say it was just an accident you stumbled onto this radioactive stuff. Yes, uh, about once a month we make a raid on all the cabaret strip joints. 
bring in some of the people for questioning. And this girl who talked, she was an addict? Uh, that's why she talked. We arrested her Saturday night. By Monday, she said she would do anything if we could give her a fix. So, so she talked. Did she tell you the name of her supplier? Uh, Biagio, Salvatore Biagio, proprietor of a spaghetti factory. He used it for, uh, how you call it? A front. Oh. Yes, a front, yes. Inspector Moscow, he's the boss here for narcotics. He arrested Biagio and questioned him now for two days. What did Mosca get out of it? Niente, nothing. But give me a little time. Then maybe. No, no, thanks. I gave it up two weeks ago. But like this, <laughs> I fool myself. Yes, I know it helps. I gave it up three months ago. I know just what you mean. How does the raw opium get to Biagio in the first place? By boat, of course. Napoli is the center for export to the North American area. Marseille and Nice handle it for the whole of Europe. Nearly all the opium from the Middle East is refined here and ends up in America, you can be sure. It comes in bulk, the raw opium, so therefore by boat and goes out refined in cocaine or heroin by airplane? Yes, probably, because it weighs only 10% after it's been refined. The stuff found on the girl, had it been newly processed? It's fresh, two or three days ago at the most. I think it's about time we had a talk with Mr. Biagio. Would it be okay with you? Sure, it's okay with me. Come on. Have the prisoners been taken to the hospital yet? Not yet, Capitano. There's no room for them. Let's have a look at them. Petrelli. Zito, manager. Basta. Yeah. Is it so bad in America? We have over 60,000 known addicts in New York City alone. It's getting worse all the time. It's Biagio. In solitary. Gives him a better chance to think. All right, Biagio, get up. off so easily. More likely killed by his own filthy junk. Or lack of it. He's been strangled. The law of the mafia. Omerta. Or whatever they call it. Whatever it is, it works. Yeah, it works. Spaghetti Biagio. With your weight problem, you shouldn't be in here. Opium, 30 kilos. With two pounds to the kilo, that leaves only 6,500 pounds to recover. We'll want a sample of this for the UN lab in Geneva. All right. Sam, catch, cut it. Tell me, what do you uh, know about uh, Biagio? Nothing. No convictions, no arrests. A little black market, maybe. Nothing more. No possible line to his source of supply? No, not yet. Now we've got the opening we planted, and we think it came by boat from Iran. And the heroin we found on the girl was freshly processed. That narrows it down. Do you think you could find out from the harbor police which ships arrived in the last few days? Sure. Port police. Collie. Collie. Acetic anhydride. But guess whose? Well, well, what do you know? Happy Locarno. It's nice to speak with a voice from home. Even if they are cops. Ah, uh, there's no place like America. Except, of course, Italy. Huh? Have a seat. Sit down. Mr. Locarno, we'd like to ask you some questions. Call me happy. 
Anything you boys from home want, you just ask Happy Locarno. Well, is it all right in front of Miss... Uh... Virgia? Sure, it's all right. Master Mangelico, is here. You ask anything in front of Virgia. She works for my chemical company. That's right, huh? Yeah? <laughs> she says it's all right. Now, gentlemen, to business. Tell me, what do you want to know? Mr. Carno, just what do you manufacture? You got a headache? Here, take a handful. Aspirin, that's what I manufacture. The best. Aspirin. What else? Laxatives. Maybe you need some. Hmm? And what else? Toothpaste. Creams, all kinds, shaving, sun, wrinkles and pimples, drops, eye, ear, nose and throat, vitamins, A, B, C and D, powders, all of this. And acetic anhydride? Anything wrong about acetic anhydride? Only that it's used to process opium into heroin. I make and sell acetic anhydride for the manufacture of vinegar. What's illegal about that? Strictly legit. Strictly a community service. I am a servant of the community. <laughs> Sound better if you would put it to music. No man named Biagio? Hmm? Biagio? Hmm, Salvatore Biagio, Biagio Spaghetti Company. We found uh, 40 tins of acetic and hydride in his office. I don't sell to a man. I sell to big wholesale distributors all over Italy. And I don't sell 40 tins, I sell 40,000. I'm legit, strictly <laughs> legit. Uh, you listen to me. In my lifetime, I personally, Happy Locarno, collected enough troubles to last 50 lifetimes. I've been kidnapped, shot, stabbed, arrested, beaten by cops, buried in solitary. I was kicked out of my country. Shoved onto a plane in handcuffs with two hard New York cops. Deliver me to two hard Naples cops. Exchange the American cops for Italian. I don't want no more, you hear? No more! Take me ten years just to get the marks off my wrists. They're gonna stay off. Pronto, okay? Capitano di Nonno. Tell him not to call you in my office. He gets me a bad name. Si, sí, Capitano di Nonno. Novita. How many of these boats are still? Grazie. The two ships, the Mombasa and Francesca Fassi, are still here. Fine. But they both sail tonight. Tonight? Yes. But we need to keep them here till we've searched them. I know it's late, but do you think you could get a detention warrant? I don't know. I could call Geneva and ask them to do it through your ambassador, do you know? New York, five hours delay. Are you nice gentlemen? You need help, huh? Yes, Mr. Locarno. We do need help. Do you have anything in mind? What do you have in mind? Well, first, I'll take off my dark glasses if you'll take off your dark glasses. I like this man, I like him. You keep talking. Provided we accept your help, what would we have to do? You? Do nothing. You leave everything up to Happy Locarno. You want to keep the two boats until tomorrow, huh? That's what you want, huh? But don't you break the law, understand? Once a policeman, always a policeman. Didn't you hear me before? I'm legit. No more marks on the wrists, you understand? Well, let's go. Come along, much as I hate to drag you away. When duty calls, you're never to be found. Come along, Lock and Bar. Thank you, Mr. Locarno. Miss Legere? Kedice? What particular work do you do for Mr. Locarno's company? Berger? She knows speak English. She has a permanent, uh, what do you say, a headache. She, she tests the aspirin. You know, see her on television making a commercial? Follow me there. <gasps> What an artist. That's my Virgil, huh? Mm.
When will you know for sure that the boats are still going to be here? I'll call you when I see the port control officer. Look, Cully, quick. Not now. We'll get cleaned up and see you later at the nightclub. 11 o'clock? You think it's worth seeing the girl again? Now that the Adju's dead, she's the only lead we've got. Okay. But just wait until you see what they have at the cabaret. Ciao. Andiamo. 11 o'clock. What is it now, another doll? Too late, she's getting into that cab. I'm sure that was our little friend from Tehran, the black widow who collects guns, remember? You mean that cab there? Yes. Well, let's go inside and check and see if we can find a way. She may be registered after all. You want to bet? We can but try. Sure you're not coming in with us? You're less obvious than your own. Okay, I'll send you a postcard. Okay. Here we go, Collie. very soon. This is not my sort of place. Don't worry, it won't be raided tonight. You won't have to answer to your congressman on what you're doing, spending government money in an establishment of this class. Very funny. Ha ha. Sink that. It'll make you feel your sweet smelling self again. I'm doing all right already. It's just that I'm far from home and we're getting nowhere with this case. And I don't think that being flip and funny about everything is going to help us anywhere whatsoever. Polly, let me go. I prefer to laugh rather than cry. I have a brother. He was an Olympic class athlete. Yeah, he was as good as that. Now he's just a stinking, shambling mass. His arms are black and blue with sores all over them from broken, infected, dirty needles. He dribbles at the mouth every time he thinks he's about to have a shot. In fact, he's just like every other pathetic bastard who's on the junk and hooked for life. You don't think I'm in this? I could do better peddling reefers in a jazz joint in Soho. Or in a coffee bar in Piccadilly. We're both far from home. Senor Lincoln Jones? Collectively, yes. One of you, please, will come with me. One of us? Please waste no time. Stone, paper, scissors. No, wait. You go with it. Maybe you're perhaps closer to this problem. Where well, belong? Send me a postcard. Please don't forget to tell the Captain Dinorno that I was. Uh, the gentlemen's toilets are over here. Anyway. Now, don't tell me you've never heard of Salvatore Biagio. Get it with you? Not with me, no. Get rid of him. There's something wrong. But you must have some of the stuff. There's been some trouble. And there will be a lot of more trouble if you don't get rid of him. Oh, quiet. What kind of trouble? Not with Biagio. You must have heard that Biagio has been arrested. Uh, yes, uh, yes, so was I. Uh, but they let me out. 
They didn't let Biaggio out. Oh, you've got one? A cigarette, I mean. That's all I'm asking for. Can I have one of yours? I tell you, there's something wrong. He doesn't look like a man from Biaggio. His shirt's too clean. I'm going to take my shower. By the time I finish, I hope you got rid of him. It's, um, it's difficult to say this to you, but I think we can help each other. It's worth a try. All the help I want from you comes in a little white packet. So, let's talk about Biagio. Why did he send you here? Empty. I told you Biagio has been in trouble. I don't want the same for you. And I don't want him to have trouble. I need him around. Biagio's all right compared to some... Whenever a boat came in, he gave it to you at a fair price and... What trouble? Well, that depends on what you call a fair price. This last boat in should have been selling much cheaper than the stuff that arrived, say, two or three weeks ago, which was much higher grade. Funny you say that. This last lot, you had to push the needle right out the other side. But Biagio, what trouble? Well, put it this way, it doesn't come much bigger. He's dead. Oh, no. No. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have put it like that. I didn't know that you cared about him. Oh, care about him, care about him. But who is going to bring it to me now? Who is going to bring it to me now? It takes months, it takes years to find a good connection. You can trust him now. And who the hell sent you anyway? I don't think you can help me anymore. You've told me all I wanted to know. Your consignment came in less than two weeks ago. I never told you that. Police. No, but I'm on their side. Get out. Scum, get out here. No need to burn yourself to death. Although it would be quicker and less painful than what you're doing with yourself at the moment. Listen, young lady. And you're listening to someone who knows. You're in a lot of dirty water. But it's only up to your knees at the moment. You've still time to walk out on your own. Otherwise, chances are you'll be carried out when there's nothing much left of you. You're still young and very pretty. There are places you can go to, treatment you can take, which isn't as bad as you may imagine. Now, why don't you give it a try? Why don't you go to hell? Just one last word of advice. Your arms. Put more makeup on them. The bullet hole show. these dogs? They get opium every day in small controlled doses. Except the duty dog, Pasco. Hola, Pasco. <laughs> he has been withdrawn for 24 hours. That's why he is so anxious to come out with us and help us now. He's wagging his tail. I hope it means he's friendly. He's on our side, all right. Does it do them any harm? No, it's all controlled, like everything else. If alcoholics could stay controlled to one drink a day, then... Uh... There'd be no more alcoholics. Time with you. Uh, one dog may save thousands of human lives. Hippolito. Well, with Biagio dead and the nightclub girl dead, it looks as though Pasco is our last hope. Good boy, Pasco. You come and help us to find it, huh? Hopla. Bye, bye, bye. Presto. Presto, Pasco. Niente. You want me to go back to the Francesca Fassi and try one more time there? 
We've got to search this ship in any case. If the dog is willing, I am too. Santi, find out the Vieni, Pasco. What is it now? Out there. Some boat, that. Not on your face, Sam. Come on. Do you know whose it is? Any half a dozen people. Onassis, Getty, Spiegel. Marco Agnelli, Mavroli. Depends on who's in town. Anything working on that cigar Geiger box of yours? Not a squeak. Tell me, Donano, anyone who comes into a hotel here has to show his passport. Yes, the concierge of the hotel would be in trouble if we found out he didn't show it, but why? A certain Mrs. Linda Benson interests us. I'm also man of the world. She interests both of us. Speak up like a man, Collier. He's right. She interests me very, very much, professionally. She carries a gun, my gun. I'll check all the hotels in Naples. But she could be from Capri or Ischia. If she looks like I think you say, I... Hey. Bravo, bravo, Pasco, bravo. Take him home with Polito. Tell Inspector Mosca. Tell him the Mombasa. Come, come, come. I told you, Jurgensen, I didn't want to be disturbed. Trouble. Police. Oh, what an honor. Captain Vanderbilt, at your service, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Like a drink? No, grazie. We would like to look at your ship. Routine check, but you can ask. And if you insist, we could get a warrant first. Yeah, the man, I've got nothing to hide. You find no contraband on board my ship. May I ask what it is you're looking for? Opium, that's all. Opium? Oh, that's nasty stuff. As I said, we wish to look at the ship. We'll carry on, only you can't expect much help from my crew. We had a bit of trouble this afternoon. The blasted boiler, blue. Powerful stuff, that aspirin. We don't have to shift or open any cargo. Oh, is that a fact? Then may I ask how the hell you expect to find any opium? We can manage. Well, good luck. Uh, Mr. Jurgensen, will you take these gentlemen wherever they want to go? All right, gentlemen. Only I warn you, you're wasting your time. We'll see. been moved. How can we prove it? That Pasco is some dog. Can we see the ship's manifest? No, no. Leave it to Mosca. I've already sent for him. And your first port of call out of Bombay is listed as Port Said? Yeah, that's right. Well, you took on 1,100 bales of cotton from Biamonte and Saltito? That's correct. And your next port of call is listed as Marseille? Well, that's where we get paid off. <laughs> Why did you put in at Naples? Nothing on the manifest calls for it. Inspector, you're a very suspicious man. I told you we put in here because we'd had nothing but trouble with a bloody boiler. But you said it was only this afternoon it exploded. Well, but it's been building up to it for weeks. <laughs> you gentlemen know how it is with these old tubs. No, I don't. Did you offload anything in this port, Captain? Offload? No. No, not a thing. Otherwise, it would all be done there, same as everything else. Who owns this ship? <laughs> well, it's there, too. Black and white. Here you are. It's a Lovie shipping company. With Capitano. Who is the owner of the Zalovi? You police are so darn clever. Couldn't you even figure that out between you? We have. The love is owned by Aubrey, export and import of Nice. <laughs> Don't ask me who owns that, <laughs> because I wouldn't know. That could be true. Thank you, Capitano. That is all. 
Tell me, before you go, did you find any of that opium? No, we didn't find any opium. Not yet. Oh, I'm glad. It's filthy, disgusting muck. I tell you... I, I tell you, if I caught any of my crew trying to smuggle that stuff... We didn't think it was your crew, Capitano. Sam, look, what do you make of all this? It's either Abria export in Nice or Piemonte Saltito in Port Said. All right, Sam, you go up to Port Said and I'll cross over to Nice to check up on who owns Abria. Why you? All right, stone, paper, scissors. Paper wrapped stone. I think this race is fixed. Why do you always win? Some people have it. Some people haven't. Abri Imports was established in 1952. Headquarters in Marseille, branch offices Athens, Rome, Paris and London. Chairman of the board, Serge Marco. The only other French company he is connected with is the Société de Banque Sud Lyon. Both clean? Clean. In addition, he is on the board of about 200 other companies throughout the world. Give or take a company. Most of them set up in Tangier, Liechtenstein, Panama or Liberia. Convenient flags for ships. Not Liechtenstein, I suppose, but all great tax havens anyway. As you say. But with his polo, his horse racing, and his string of women, how does he find the time? Other uh, legendary playboys before him have led active business lives as well. Maybe it's the air in France. It's the air. But to get back to Abri, what's its main line of business? Aircraft and shipping. Do you know Marco personally? Uh, we have an arrangement. He doesn't mix in police circles. I don't mix in high society. How do I get to him? by being in Deauville or Nassau or Ascot or Monte Carlo at the right moment. Just now, Monte Carlo is the right moment. for my very, very last encore. No. <laughs> no, really, really, you have to believe me. I have to leave. I have to be back in America tonight. So now, for my very, very last song. Why? Is he here tonight? Well, of course. Where else? Over there, table 13. He's the man sitting next to Sofia Vanzo. Who is she? The Italian film star. My dear, don't you know anybody? Bum, ba, bum, ba.
Who's that sitting on the other side of the market? Oh, I don't know. Couldn't be anyone important. Well, that's silly of me. Marco only knows important people. Are you a reporter or something? Sort of. Oh, well, here's my card. But if you want any of my photographs, they're very expensive. I mean, the best work always is, isn't it, dear? I've changed my mind. I want pictures. Close-ups of everyone at that table. Private detective? No, no, just, just jealous. What was that you were telling me about your stables? Oh, please, That's why I bought so many of the Yaga's horses. Unless you have the best blood stock and the time to steady breathing, there's no point in trying, really. Excuse me a moment, yes. please. Mr. Lincoln, what a surprise. That's just what I was thinking. Shall we dance? If you insist. What's this all about, Mrs. Benson? Not Mrs. Benson anymore. I've resumed my maiden name, Linda Gale. And dispensed with your wedding ring, I see. Well, well. Easy come, easy go. Who the devil are you? You're very inquisitive. When I asked you the same question in Tehran, you told me you were a salesman. Now, that wasn't true, was it? Certainly it was. I sell aircraft spares. It so happens I'm here trying to get an introduction to your boyfriend. Serge Marco is not my boyfriend. I met him only a few days ago at Ischia. Ischia is next door to Naples, and you were there with Marco. May I ask what you're doing here in Monte Carlo? Questions, questions, questions. If you have to know, I came here on his yacht. Quick work. Mr. Lincoln, two weeks ago I became a widow. Now I had a couple of alternatives. To put on weeds and weep, or try and forget the whole thing and start a new life. That's what I'm trying to do. You're doing pretty well. If I don't, I'll die. Please help me. How can I do that? Don't remind me of my husband. I can't bear it. All right, Miss Gale. Thank you. Now could we go back to my table? You wanted to meet Serge Marco. Yes, yes I do. Annie, I found a friend from home. This is Mr. Lincoln, Lady Or Lewis. How do you do? Mr. Martin. Mr. Marco. How do you do? Mr. Vanzo, Mr. Hunter, and Madame Huguenet. Mr. Lincoln is in the aircraft business. Uh, which aircraft company, Mr. Lincoln? Airplane spare parts. Out of stock items, mostly. What are you doing in Monte Carlo? To be frank, I came here hoping to meet you. I thought perhaps we might... Uh, do a little business? Yes. We probably could. I have many interests in the aviation world, mostly in the Middle East. Spares are always a problem. You're not going to talk business, are you, Serge? At this moment, my dear, I'm going to dance with you. Perhaps later we can go back to my boat, the Martinique, if that will not inconvenience you. Not in the slightest. Good. But I hope you're not too tired, monsieur. Serge will keep you till the early hours before talking business. Then, when your resistance is low... Speak for yourself, my dear. He seems very civil. Why not wait till you've done business before deciding that? But it's true this keeping you up late business. Serge once talked me into selling him some of my Palm Beach property at half a million less than its real value. Well, I'll watch out. But of course, it was all done with his usual charm. Mr. Lincoln is impervious to charm, but he's an expert salesman. I'm sure he'll be careful. I was brought up in a tough school. I've even taken money from rickshaw coolies. Are you sure it's going to be all right? I'd hate to be stranded in daylight in evening clothes. Oh, come on. It'll only take an hour to can. OK. And you'll see that Mr. Lincoln gets back safely? Don't worry. He's in good hands. You have a swell yacht, Mr. Lincoln. Very good champagne. I'll be right back. Tell me, Fred. What else do we need? Sikorsky S-55 helicopter, main rotors and blades. 
airborne navigation and radar equipment, and reciprocal aircraft engines. I can't give you quantities yet, Mr. Lincoln. I'll have to check with the Paris office. The point is, can you supply these things uh, without delay? I'm pretty sure we can. Of course, prices and deliveries will depend upon quantities ordered. Of course. See that we have full details here by lunchtime. I'll take care of it, Marco. Make yourself at home, Mr. Lincoln. Anything you want, just ask for it. Come on, dear. I'm looking for the bathroom, Stuart. That is the radio room, monsieur. At the end of the corridor is what you're looking for. Thank you. There's nothing in that drawer, except my life. You're welcome to it. Your life? My diary. Every night I put into it, everything that did not happen to me. I'm running out of things that did not happen. And what will become of you when you do run out of this life that is not happening? very simple. I'll be forced to live the other life. The happening life. And die. But how can one live the life that does not happen? For me, that's easy. I'm the wife of Serge Marco. That explains everything. And believe me. Oh. I see you have met my wife, Mr. Lincoln. You should be in bed, my dear. I will escort you to your cabin. Madame Marco is not at all well. Perhaps if you would join the others. Certainly. We should be arriving in Khan any minute now. Come on, darling. Good night, madame. Good night. Don't fall down. This is the first time I've had a lift home on a 600-ton yacht. 
I hope it'll not be the last. I'll have a car waiting to take you home. Okay, great. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Let's have one less drink, huh? We can discuss all this tomorrow. Will you be in Monte Carlo then? We got a lot to talk about now. There's someone in particular I want you to meet. There he is. something aside from the fingernails. I'll bet we're going to find there was fresh water in the lungs as well. Huh? Dr. Pino, Mr. Jones. How do you do? Hello. The post-mortem report on the subject has just come in. The subject had a name. The name was Sam Lincoln. The subject was age 35 to 40. Height 5 foot 10, weight 75 kilos. General health, no signs of organic deterioration or disease. Head wounds above left occipital area superficial. Probable cause, striking driftwood or small boats. Tell me, the water in his lungs, not seawater, was it? I was going to tell you in good time. We haven't got any time, so just let us have the interesting facts. In blood analysis, alcohol content 32 degrees. Much above intoxication level. Not Sam, he drank very little. It's in black and white. What's in the police report? Drunk and fell into the bay. It's still open. You bet it's still open. You had a code between no, you? No, my French isn't too good. Conference blue, midnight Friday. Is that what it says? Uh-huh. Today is Friday. This doesn't mean a thing to me. It's time we had a talk with Mr. Marco. Maybe it's better I see him alone. Yes, he hasn't set eyes on me yet. Better keep it that way. You can sweat him out a bit. Okay, I'll see you later. For a start, I can ask if that's all you can tell us, Mr. Marco? I'm afraid so. Unless, of course, you've been able to find out something more from the crew. As a matter of fact, I did find out something. Oh? You did? I found out that every single member of the crew said the same thing. Oh? That they'd seen nothing. You know, I think you're trying to make me nervous, Inspector. Not unless you have anything to be nervous about, Monsieur. Oh, I am not the nervous type. See? To recapitulate, Monsieur Lincoln was in good health at four this morning, when, according to you, he left your yacht. Not just according to me. Everybody who saw him leaving knew he was... that he had been drinking. Right? That's true. Yes. The post-mortem found a great deal of alcohol in his bloodstream. You see, I told you. Which could have been injected with a hypodermic. Huh? This is the way my guests take the alcohol. For you? No, thank you, monsieur. You seem to be entirely without vices, Inspector. One vice, Monsieur Marco. I am very, very obstinate. I never like to give in so easily as this. Once more, please. Blue chips, blue note, blue moon, blue grotto. That's a nightclub in Cannes, I found that out. Blue train, blue bird, blue beard, blue surge, blue bell, blue nose. Blue train? Why not? Train bleu. And at midnight, it's just leaving Marseille. It's a good spot to hold a conference. Can you get me on it in time? It won't be my fault if I don't. Pardon. Avez-vous du feu, monsieur, s'il vous plaît? A 
Avec plaisir, madame. Mademoiselle. Mademoiselle. Brigitte. Give him a message. Tell him I've seen that American fellow. The partner of the one. The one we fixed. He's on the train. Are you sure? I'm gonna make damn sure. I'm gonna start at the front and work my way back. Come in. I thought we were not to be disturbed. You can still finish making out that check. What is it? Captain Vanderbilt who thinks he's that American of Lincoln's. Don't stand out there. Come inside. Lincoln's partner? He's on this train? Randall says so. I never seen the man. Marco, this killing of Lincoln, this is none of our business. Fina Lowe's in the Place taken. Madam, would you mind if I smoke? <gasps> I noticed you took a pill. I thought perhaps. It's nothing. Small headache. Are you sure the smoke won't distress you? I'm never distressed by smoke. Surely not. But thank you. Not at all. I have a headache myself. I wonder if it'd be too much to ask if... Uh... The aspirin? Of course. Oh, I am sorry. Don't worry. Not important. It's very clumsy of me. I'm terribly sorry. Would you allow me to buy you a drink? No, thank you. Alcohol doesn't agree with me. Are you traveling alone? Alone? Oh, no. I always have tutu. Dis bonsoir, tutu. Bonsoir, tutu. You're a fine-looking fella. He loves being flattered. He seems to understand every word you say. Oh, yes. Tutu and I always have conversation. Tutu is most understanding. All my life I've wanted to meet a truly understanding dog. Perhaps we could write to each other. Where does Tutu live? In my mind. Then I'll write to Tutu, care of the mind of Madame... Uh... No. Because I also live in the mind of another. Whose mind is that? There is no one of that oh. name on the train. Oh, I guess I misunderstood. Also, I regret that there is no compartment available right now. But oh, the well. sooner we will arrive in Lyon, there ah, might be a cancellation. Right. Thank you. OK, yes, yes, thank you. Martino. All right. Come in, come in. The American, Lincoln's partner. How do you know it was Lincoln's partner? There are 200 million Americans. Vanderbilt is the only one who can point him out. So we better find Vanderbilt. Marco. 
Next time you want someone killing my territory, leave it to my people. Okay? Relax. Oh, excuse me. Did you see a woman carrying a small dog pass with this car? No. Mrs. Benson. You've made a mistake. I'm Madame Renoir. Excuse me. We're on the same side. Who are you, then? You're certainly not Benson's widow. His sister. Pardon, monsieur? Captain Vanderbilt. Do I look like Captain Vanderbilt? Yes, you do. Central Intelligence, then. It doesn't matter who. My people told me about your partner, Mr. Lincoln. I'm sorry. You're after my brother's murderer, too, aren't you? Yes, but with a difference. I want him alive. How did she get in here? I found her wandering up and down the corridor. I thought she might talk about her husband. Did she? She's doped up to the eyebrows. Opium and heroin in there.
That's all the evidence I need. What are you going to do now? Pick up Marco and his boys. Why don't you wait until we get to Lyon? You're going to need help. If I wait till we get to Lyon, I may not be alive. Are you sure? I'm sure. Look, I'll be much obliged if you stay in here. Keep the door locked. Keep an eye on her. And when we get to Lyon, if I'm not back here within two minutes of the train stopping, you call the police, okay? Okay. Beyond the dining car. More compartments. Luggage cars. They must be on the train somewhere. Come on, we'll look for them. But everyone must be asleep. Then we'll wake them up. Quickly, quickly. 
I'm glad we got Marco anyway. At least that one's wrapped up. Don't you believe it. There'll always be another one to take his place. The answer's miles and miles away. In the poppy fields. 